So what do we have here? We have a bell curve, and a bell curve describes the distribution of gains and losses or deviation within a set of data. And if you're trading on Betfair, then what you will find is that this also describes um, sort of your position within the market. And it's key to understanding how to be a profitable trader. Please like and comment on the video below. That will allow me to produce better quality videos and more of them in the future. So here's a quick summary of what you're looking at here, a bell curve. Basically, if you perform an action or you measure something, then generally you get a, a distribution. And um, the, the middle of the distribution is the average. And then on one side or the other, you have things above or below that average. And when we're talking trading, uh, basically we're saying that on one side of the bell curve, we have profits and we have losses on the other. Um, and then there's a the height of the bell curve and the shape of the bell curve can change. We're gonna keep it simple in this video. But basically, you know, you're gonna be on one side of that bell curve. When you first start, you are going to be right in the middle. As you can see, we've got a big sign here saying you are here. If you trade, punt, do anything completely randomly, as long as it's, it's methodical, i.e. you don't chase losses or you alter your behavior, then over the very, very long term, that's more or less where you will be. Because if you do stuff at random, you're gonna get random results, but in terms of the way that we look at the market here, random is actually zero. So that line that's running down the center of the bell curve that we see here is basically saying you're not gonna make any money. But the interesting thing is, if you have a methodical approach to the market, it doesn't mean that you're gonna win much money, it doesn't mean that you're gonna lose. So how on earth do people end up so heavily on one side? So if I color this in, I'm not gonna to waste too much time doing this, uh, you can see that the red area here, I'm going to mark down as losses. And if we go on the other side, I'm going to mark down this area here in a lovely shade of green. And these are profits. So if you look at a betting exchange, um, or you look at any trading market for, for that particular um, situation, um, you can imagine it as a pool. So you have basically a large pool um, and then I wonder, I wonder if I can illustrate this. Let's do a circle over here. If you have a large pool and you draw a line down the middle, on one side you're going to have all of the people that lost and on the other side you're going to have all of the people that won. Don't ever let anybody tell you that there's no profit in the market because there is absolutely tons. For every person that loses there has to be a winner. Um, and it's 50-50. The market is split down the middle as you see on a bell curve effectively. Um, and on one side you have losses and on the other side um, you're gonna have lots of gains. So, you know, it's, it's split effectively. And on one side you have winners and on one side you have losers. So yeah, whether you look at it like a bell curve or a pie chart, basically you can see that there's money in the market. Your, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to get some of that money out of the market. You have uh, to be on, on the right-hand side of this. Now, it's not as simple as that, because if the market was frictionless and completely flowing freely, then that would always be the case. However, um, you know, companies have commercial objectives. So effectively, let me just redo this. There's a slither down the center of the market here that is also red. That red extends out into the green area. Uh, why does it do that? I'm going to color this in a little bit harder here. Uh, the reason that it does that is because of commission or transactional costs. So the issue that you have is that actually the, the green area is slightly smaller than the red area uh, because of transaction costs that take place within the market. How, uh, so, so really, you know, what I've said so far, if you trade or bet completely at random in a methodical way, that's the important qualifier, um, then you'll break even longer term minus commission. That is basically the worst scenario that you could find yourself in. So how on earth do people get over here? How do people lose enormous amounts of money? Well, they will be things that you will probably be um, familiar with. And um, if you look at the way that the market works, um, if you follow a system, uh, you know, you, you buy a £37 ebook, they are there to take money from you. 
if you have a system that works that's really simple that you could put in a couple of pages, you just automate it and make enormous amounts of money. You do not turn around and give it to everybody else. So systems, um, if you follow a system, uh, then you are probably going to end up on the left-hand side of this because systems just lose money repeatedly. But the confidence that you have been bestowed upon by the system will make you lose it much faster. Uh, chasing losses. Whoops. Let's try and uh, write this reasonably, succinctly. Chasing losses will make you end up on there. Losses are inevitable. It's a balance between profit and loss. But if you start chasing them, they multiply rapidly. Um, I mean, there are so many ways to end up on this side of, of, of thing. Uh, money management. If you, um, I'm just going to do that. If you put, uh, if you have bad money management, um, losses can outweigh the profits because you're mismanaging the way that you do it. No strategies, no tactics will end up there. Um, but also, you know, if you, if I, I'm going to put mindset over here as well, because it's amazing that people fear losses and people very often are so fearful of losses that they find them everywhere. I've seen it when you give somebody something um, and you sit them down, you do it and you, you know, you've know you illustrated to them exactly what they should be doing and they still haven't been able to do it. They only act when it's too late. And even then, you know, so the best example I can give you is, you know, a, a trade looks like it's about to occur. So you anticipate it's about to occur. You put the position in the market and at that point, the, the trade will occur or you look at it and you think, oh, you know what, actually, this isn't so good and you get rid of it. But very often people will sit on a position, they'll wait and wait and wait for something to happen. And then um, the thing happens and they but they're not quite sure. Maybe they should just wait a little bit longer. And by the time they finally get into the market, it's too late and the position starts to reverse. You know, I'm sure, we've all been there at some point. Um, but and if you look on but also, you know, every week without fail, um, I have a run in with somebody who just sort of says, oh, you know, don't encourage people to do this because they'll only ever lose money. And it's like, well, no, they won't. I know, you know, when I started, I didn't know many people that did this. And now there are many, many people that, that do this. But also, um, you know, people say, well, you, you don't do it, you know, stop, stop lying. And it's like, no, I do do this. And they're saying, oh, well, you're bound to say that. And it's like, no, I'm saying that because it's true. Um, and they're saying, ah, oh, and you get into these circular arguments that have no end. Um, but, you know, absolutely guarantee you, uh, this is where those people reside. Uh, they cannot see the opportunity. And they're talking to somebody that actually does it, who's going to give them a straight answer. But they still can't see it. Um, so they are definitely over on that side. But the interesting thing is, you know, so who's, who's on the other side? Well, there are loads of things. You know, if you've got a proper methodology... Um, then and decent um, strategies, you know, you will end up on on this side. Uh, if you're using um, an API product like Bet Angel, um, you know, I guarantee you that uh, if you're betting by uh, mobile, you're phoning in your bet or using the website, you're probably on the left hand side. People that use um, software are probably on the right hand side, and and I bet you that that plays out if we ever get hold of those of that data. Um, money management, again, you know, if you've got, whoops, if you've got proper money management, um, then that is going to put you on the right hand side. There are many things that you can do to get you on that right side. But the interesting thing is when I first started, and this should illustrate the point to you about what I'm talking about here, is I came to the market, um, I was working on many different things, but, you know, I, the, the interesting thing about when I first started out is, you know, I was doing a bit of football, a bit of golf. And curiously, I was doing financial markets. I did a lot on financial markets because I could model them, I could price them, I could anticipate price action. Um, and those markets were reasonably liquid back in the day. Um, and that's where I started. But the big market that was out there that was absolutely huge, that was turning over enormous amounts of money was racing. Um, but I knew nothing about racing. Absolutely nothing. I knew what a horse race was. But that was about it. I knew nothing else about it. So I thought, well, how am I going to compete in this market? How am I going to cross this line and get onto the right-hand side of the bell curve? So do you know what I did? The funny thing that I did um, was not look at, you know, I, you have to have a methodical strategy. You need to follow it through properly and not modify your behavior on a strategy. Um, you need to uh, get all of those other things in place, like good money management. And of course, I created Bet Angel to help me. 
um, crack the racing markets. But the first thing that I did was avoid all of the obvious mistakes and where losses were. But also I went into the market and I traded it completely at random. You can do the same now very easily. If you set up Bet Angel Automation, if you don't believe that you're going to end up in the middle of the bell curve, if you trade methodically, um, but at random, set up some automation to do it. And what you'll find is that you'll more or less break even. You won't really lose much, you won't make much. On some days you will make something, on other days you won't make something. Uh, but you'll end up plus or minus nothing. So what I did on racing was I conceptualized the idea of this bell curve and what I tried to do was to not make obvious errors. Um, so I wasn't looking for the perfect strategy. I was basically trying to make sure that I didn't end up on the left hand side. So what I would do is I'd trade loads of races, I would look at where the losses occurred and then try and study and understand why those losses occurred. But the first thing I would do is strike them out because what that would immediately do is mean that my biggest losses were cut back and that in fact that was enough to get me just over that line, the red line that we see in the middle to do with transaction costs. That was all that I did to start with was actually just push myself um, to make sure that I didn't lose money. That was my first objective was, you know, don't lose money and try and uh, work my way down this particular bell curve. If, if you look at the universe of um, Bet Angel, sorry, I was going to say Bet Angel, Betfair uh, exchange users, I am right on the right hand side of this bell curve now. But that process has been gradual. I gradually worked my way there over a period of time to end up on the right hand side. But I'm better than 99.99% of people that have ever used Betfair. Um, but I started right in the middle. And basically by striking out losses, that was the first thing that I did because that allowed me to participate in the market without costing me any money. And then it was a question of refining strategies and gradually pushing forward. And you know, it's small incremental gains. You know, every, every day I analyze data, every month I'm looking at stuff, I'm testing new ideas, strategies, and I'm just gradually pushing forward at, as much as I can. Very, very slow changes, but gradually that gets you further and further down that curve. But the most important thing was not to make all of those mistakes. If you make some of these mistakes that you see on the left-hand side here, that will get you into trouble and you will be unable to escape from there. But the fact is that I reckon most of the losses that come into the market and therefore the things that fund the profitable side of the market are all of those typical errors that you see um, on the left hand side. And when I first started trading on racing, that was the way that I got to break even, figured out where some of the bigger losses were coming from and why they were occurring. That pushed me onto the right hand side and then it was just a question of refining and tweaking, um, practicing and getting better and better. I've traded, or I'm all, well on my way to trading over a quarter of a million markets. And when you do that, you realize that, um, you know, you see repeating patterns and different types of behavior and some things work well in some markets and not in others. And that as a consequence, you know, it's not the process of trading them well necessarily that gets me to where I am. It's just avoiding those obvious mistakes and not making any of those mistakes that you see on the left-hand side of the bell curve. So yeah. All my experience in the market tells me that most of the losses that occur in the market aren't through bad luck, they're through bad process. Um, that effectively gives money to the other side of the bell curve, which is where you want to be. And if you adopt a methodical approach to the market, you avoid making obvious errors, then I don't think that really you'll lose much money. And if you start to work heavily on implementing sensible strategies, then you'll probably start moving down that right-hand side of the bell curve. But yeah. When I first started trading, I was smack bang in the center, the same as a lot of people when they're first starting out. But the first thing that I did was all of those errors on the left-hand side. That will get you um, off on the right journey. And then you can start moving across, becoming more sophisticated, and hopefully occupy a decent place on the right-hand side of that bell curve.